Hello and welcome to Cinema Express. My name is Ram Venkat Shrikar. Today we have with us uh, the filmmaker duo Raj and DK, who produced the recently released Telugu film Cinema Bandi, and they are also the creators of the upcoming, much anticipated uh, second season of Amazon Prime Videos, The Family Man. Uh, hello, Raj. Hello, DK. How are you? Hi, Ram. Hello. How are you? Yeah. So to begin with, uh, congrats for Cinema Bandi. I I love the film. Uh, for its innocence and its honesty and how beautifully it deconstructs the myth of filmmaking so congrats for that film the first question uh, you know uh, you've been on this path from being filmmakers who struggle to fund their films to taking up the role of producers and enabling the younger crop of filmmakers to produce their own films how has the journey been see we are uh, yes we started off as independent filmmakers i mean hardcore pure independent filmmakers where we just had each other that mm. was the only good part there are two mm. of us so uh, even our first film we had barely a 10 people crew and sometimes it used to come down to three huh. like i would be holding the boom mic and dk would be giving the clap mm. and uh, yeah it'll be like one one person holding the camera two actors and two of us and we go to a location and shoot a scene we've shot like that also on our first wow. film it'll be, yeah wow. we'll be directing while holding the boom mic and saying can you say that again or like can you face this way turn around i'm still holding the boom when my hands are wow. hurting and so dk is like you know say take two and then you know he's right there talking so that's how we did with all our with whatever money we had and whatever friends could help with so we just wiped out our savings and made our first film and uh, the whole idea is that you know we come we really made it brick by brick and we had to learn every step of the filmmaking because we didn't want to be dependent on anybody so we taught ourselves cinematography editing we bought machines edited our own film every single thing figured out sync sound figured out you know graphics posters the whole thing when you do it we also felt how much it's of use as we come here that those skill sets are still of use mm-hmm. so but main point is that when we started off once we finished uh, when we started off we had so many questions creative questions logistical questions and we just didn't have a single person we knew there was no mentor for us so you know you're looking for that mentor role key script is written is this okay what else can i change can i sit can we brainstorm can i get a better version out of this that wasn't there for a long time for the first okay. film second film and then by then we are our own teachers our own mm. students so that's the idea behind making indie film with new filmmakers is to be there be that mentor be that producer that we never had okay so uh, what was the degree of your involvement in cinema bandi the foundation came from praveen and uh, vasant so mm. basically they had this idea they came with this little story then we said okay write a script and also writing a script is only one part of the thing actually show that you can make a film mm-hmm. so make a short film mm-hmm. so then they came back uh, making a sh- uh, 40 minute short film which is actually not short at all that's yeah. like almost half a feature film and uh, so once that yeah. was done carry on are basically the involvement the see they had a super very nice concept but then again these concepts you know you ha- you kind of have similar concepts whenever mm. you are a filmmaker you say i want to make a film on filmmaking that's one of the foremost thoughts we also wrote a script when we started out thinking two guys and a script two guys and mm. a film it's called about two yeah, guys yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but then these guys were very passionate and very involved and had a really nice booklet which a presentation was great basically the presentation to us is what attracted and their passion and so and uh, so all credit goes to them about getting the actors you know finding them researching figuring out who to pick the roles all that but they of also filmmakers usually come to us and to produce because we are not typical producers they come mm. because of creative collaboration mm. because of the creative mentoring that we we did over the last few years and yeah. that's what this was too so once they had a first draft of the script we all sat down and figured out we brainstorm like always like how we would have loved our scripts to be mentored or brainstormed by somebody who's done it already so yeah we sat on the script with the with both of them praveen and vasant then we sat on the edit uh, for a long time so usually we come in before and after 
after a film like you know you okay. prep the film well scripting look at the cast sit with them just like collaborate with them and then go off and let them shoot like i go usually for a first couple of days make sure that everything is working fine they're shooting well they're running on time and they're shooting enough for the edit tomorrow mm-hmm. you know all that all the mistakes we've done where we were like okay. shit we should have shot this angle also we never <laughs> did you were too confident i'll do it in one shot huh. this scene and then tomorrow you realize it's it's, it's boring and I, i don't have anything else so you take care of those and then you wait for them to finish because that's where the baby is that's where you know it's 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 the director's core job hmm. so then we sit on the edit for a long time sit on the background score we sit on all kinds of things to make sure uh Yeah, because film. these are also the lesser known aspects of filmmaking for a lot of first time people right they hmm. you know when it comes to sound or when it comes to mixing or even 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 simply edit right a lot of like like a first time director or even actually any director loves everything they've shot so they hmm. need somebody to tell them ki i know this is also great this is also great but two of them is too much so hmm. do only you know somebody yeah. has to yes. like give it a shape and make it you know yeah So uh, you produced D for Dopidi in 2013, and although it wasn't a commercial success, it has gained following over the years. And do you think a film like that uh, would have benefited from the availability of streaming platforms? A film like definitely. that, definitely. That is a big difference. Definitely, yeah. It's a yeah, yeah, yeah. See again, D for Dopidi. Uh, of course, it's a slightly bigger film than Cinema mm-hmm. Bandi because it actually had known actors and all. But again, it's a film that. I like to think that if you start watching it, uh, it will grow on you, and you'll like mm. it, and you'll talk about it to friends and all that. But releasing in a theater has this habit of make or break on a Friday, which doesn't work out well for all films. See, some mm. films that's great, for some film it just doesn't work. It's a film that needs to grow on you. You need to appreciate it in your own time. You cannot go mm. in a euphoria, mass euphoria, and say ki. and then come out saying wow i was blown away and then it becomes a super hit that doesn't happen to all films right so yeah i think the fardo pretty would have definitely benefited if we had a streaming platform where people can watch at their own time the idea of the fardo pretty also was to go slightly against the mold hmm that we don't have a love story it's not every film those days were love stories yeah and we said and we we didn't even have a love track for that matter we just wanted to we just want to do a genre film a uh, out and out crime comedy bank high in you know, a heist I, genre yeah. film a caper a caper a caper. heist film a caper film and yeah. uh, we also had high confidence in telugu audience that when you do something small and new and if it catches their eye they really really uh, champion it um so it almost happened we saw in a lot of previews across we went from uh, hyderabad to vizag to tirupati to watch all the previews and people were like loving it hmm. but then it all comes with theatrical releases yeah. the shows the competition all that so and we didn't want and it was that. a christmas release I, I, like yeah. so there are a lot of films to look forward to and family events so once a friday goes wrong or a saturday goes wrong or a weekend goes wrong then it's hard to catch up in that uh, competition i think yeah yeah so uh, one of my favorite bits in cinema bandi is when the auto becomes the trolley and the bullock cart becomes a crane uh, this this cute little details so considering you both have uh, come from this indie school of film making with minimal resources like just like uh, raj just pointed out uh, do you remember uh, employing similar tricks in... <laughs> i do i do my yeah, favorite yeah. is dk and i we were in the us of course we were all also in a small town you know mm. in a us still a small town we were both going in dk's we were driving dk's car and uh, we went to a walmart like a okay. shopping like a shopping mall like a big shopping mall with shopping carts also. and we actually stole a shopping cart Uh, and put it no for you it's also it's not easy to steal it huh? there are cameras everywhere there are people watching so we had to <laughs> wait for a few hours when nobody's watching steal the shopping cart because we couldn't wow. think of another became... way to do a dolly shot and we really wanted a dolly shot okay. so we came and we know we had to break the you know the the chotu thing that is there so hmm. one person can sit so dk would sit in the shopping cart with the camera we are only shooting it 
and i'm pushing the trolley and nikke be like faster faster and like no be pushing so fast that we used to trip all also so that was one of our jugards we used to do wonderful 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 really uh, so cinema bandi has this great uh, tagline uh, everyone is a filmmaker at heart which is absolutely true now extending this concept into reality the means to make a film like camera the you know the sound setup and the editing software they have become more uh, accessible over the years uh, as supposed to say when you were starting out 15 years ago so uh, with the you know with this accessibility don't you think it has also uh, exceptionally increased the competition among aspiring filmmakers making it harder for them to stand out how do you look at this evolution of independent cinema the, the first pre question i'll answer did you answer the main question is that uh, when initially when we uh, started out and left our careers software engineering careers there in the us mm. everybody used to ask why how come how come you did this and then mm. we used to say that everyone is a filmmaker at heart especially indians yeah. especially telugu people telugu, yeah or everybody thinks we are filmmakers we are just putting extra effort in actually making something Mm-hmm. is used to be our mantra used to be our go to statement that line was born when we were independent filmmakers first one first time where we used to say are everybody is a filmmaker so are we and we are just working on it you know mm-hmm. so it started from there i thought it's a nice line that we should hold on and use it in one day for an a nice film and we decided cinema bandi was the best example wow. best uh, wow. place for right, it. yeah yeah and speaking have... of that uh... yeah. Yeah, right. speaking of the means and competition and everything today it is absolutely true see 20 years ago or 15 years ago uh it was harder to make a film but that also meant fewer people were making a film mm-hmm. now literally anybody with a phone can make a film actually and it can become it can go viral on youtube also the short films or memes or jokes that go viral mm-hmm. it keeps happening all the time right yeah so the competition is a lot so i think today uh i think today at a certain level for independent filmmakers what really matters is not about how great your shots are or how fantastically well it shot because see there will come a time when you'll get to explore all that see you will never match up to somebody who has a lot more resources than you hmm. no matter how great your shot on an iphone is somebody else with a with an alexa will shoot a better shot than you but i think the focus should be on just the basics of filmmaking and the honesty of storytelling that's what matters for an independent filmmaker you might have all the talent of nolan in you but when you get the support that nolan gets you can make a film like nolan but right now stick to your story stick just be honest about it wow so uh, if there are any aspiring filmmakers watching this interview uh, how can they approach d2r ind like i'm i'm sure it's not uh, as easy as simply directly walking into the office what do you expect from a filmmaker pitch See, Pravin got very lucky from what I hear every time I see him talk about it in interviews. He just mm-hmm. happened to be super lucky that he just happened right place at the right time. But he was prepared. Mm-hmm. He had a good presentation. So it is usually the I don't I'm not saying make a comic book and show us. We did that. We made our mm-hmm. own comic book to make nineteen because nobody was oh. understanding the show mm-hmm. film. We had to make a comic book and show everybody. Look, and they were like, "Oh, this is so cool! You guys thought of so much." So it gives you a feeling of they have done something unique to uh, attract you. But mm-hmm. beyond that, really comes down to two things. One is the script. You, you, if you have a unique idea, if you have a nice movie, a typical film, we are not the right people because there are so many nice people who can do it. Uh, we are not producers who are doing ten shows, ten films. Mm-hmm. I just want that one simple idea, one nice idea, unique idea, and. a short film to back it that you shot something that you look at it from the very first minute you go like oh wow this guy knows filmmaking this mm. he's doing it so nicely so that's these two i think okay uh, so do you feel is the responsibility of uh, established filmmakers to enter in this space or lend support to small films in any capacity not just produce but lend support in any capacity that will be great to do that i mean I, i i like to think that's what we are doing right i mean we started yeah, off yeah. mentoring uh mentoring younger filmmakers people would once in a while like when we are at an event or at a function or at a, at a film festival people would come and just ask us questions about how did you do this how did you do that how was your journey and we keep giving as honest answers as possible mm. in the hope that maybe they'll also 
pick up something and they can also have a similar journey. Uh, but lately, because once we started turning producer, like started producing our own film, and once we have, the, at least right now, we have the ability to do that. Hmm. So uh, we decided, and this film also, Cinema Bandi also, the idea was not that we were going there looking to produce a film. But when this, when these passionate people came with a story idea and a short film, hmm. we started giving them ideas, started mentoring them on how to move forward and also ended up saying, you know what, we'll only produce it because... Okay. It does. It uh, we can do that. So it it ended up happening uh, like that. So it'll be great if uh, you know a lot of filmmakers who uh, have at least I mean if, if it's their interest, right? They have mm. if they have had an indie background and they want to support other indie filmmakers. Uh, but I mean I I think it'll help. It'll only help bring yeah. out these unique voices. In general, I feel filmmakers are helpful are a helpful lot. All right, you know because. Mm. Coming from passion, it's one of those jobs or careers that's come from passion alone mm-hmm. most of the times. Not it's like like dad is not saying go shoot a film, right? Or like your nine to five are shooting karna. Hai. It's mm-hmm. really that passion that makes this career. Mm-hmm. So there are all people I feel willing to help. They would love to help. Uh, I think it's in the nature of being a filmmaker. I feel at least I feel, mm-hmm. but it's the access. It's mm-hmm. the access. It's the few number of uh, filmmakers that are there and lakhs that want to make films it's just the access and that so that's what we are hoping that we could try and help wherever we can i hope you get to do a lot more uh, so now uh, let's address the elephant in the room that everybody is talking about and fervently looking forward to uh, the second season of the family man i just watched the trailer i loved it uh my timeline like i said it, it's ablaze with mentions of shrikant tiwari so uh, <laughs> was there an added burden while writing the family man 2 because of the success of the first season because you know repeating the same formula runs the risk of uh, looking monotonous right so yeah. was it harder to crack the second season have, in any way i have a very good answer for that i have a very easy answer for that okay because we finished we 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 finished uh, uh post production on family man 1 and mm-hmm. we we had already written family man okay. season 2 and we were actually shooting family man season 2 when family wow. man 1 released so fortunately or unfortunately for us we didn't know Hmm. how big family man one was going to be or what that success meant or what people were liking or not liking in it because we were already half we were already shot we had already shot 50% of season 2 okay. we had already written finished shot 50% when we when family man one released so we took a little break for the promotions and everything and then hmm. went back to finishing season 2 so honestly speaking while there's a lot to learn from season 1 into season 2 uh season 2 is its own entity i mean it okay. it came when we wrote one we knew what season 2 was going to be so we finished one we we developed and mm-hmm. finished two so the success or you know a, any criticism of season 1 does not really have a role to play in season 2 okay okay at least not in a big way maybe some okay. small things here and there we might have but Yeah. Now that uh, you're mastering the long form at the uh, storytelling medium, uh, are there any of your earlier films that you would love to uh, revisit as web series? See, most of the times the movies, the stories, <clears throat> you know when you have an idea or a concept, you know that this is a really good fit for a series or a film. Hmm. So uh, the big mistake a lot of people tend to do, and we also might have. Uh, thought of this uh, doing it for a bit initially is to convert a, sto- a film story into a series uh, thing hmm. which is tough you're going to now start stretching it you're going to start buffering it putting a lot of extra scenes you really need an idea that automatically says there is a three season story at least in this hmm. right it's a central character central theme central uh, central premise that can expand into uh, at least two three seasons then you have a series idea um but uh, no we have we have pretty good series lined up stories okay. and development and shooting that i'm i'm plate is full with series that we have we're not really thinking of the older films but um which series which movie would be a good series we get if at all see, actually a- all of, see not, i don't think any of the movies we made naturally would have made a series but Go there go. is always the possibility of uh, taking a larger concept and doing a spin off for example show in the city right it's about all these myriad of characters in a noisy city for example 
if you were to explore the spirit of mumbai or the spirit mm-hmm. of a noisy city that could have made a series or if you were to explore the concept of zombies into a series a go go gone could have yeah. could be basically i think you're making me think about this point right now and i think what it is is that we tend to build worlds i think like you know everything is a little world or whatever there is certain universe to it like mm. in the family man this universe to it cinema bandi has a small village universe to it where you want to be there you want to see them again you want to be in the village watch them do whatever they can to again so similarly show in the city go 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 on even 99 they're all films that you there is a world and so you don't mind recreating that world into a mm-hmm. so that, that could be the answer i was about yeah, to ask cinema bandi could make a funny comedy you know, touching comedy series of 25 minutes you know it could easily yeah, make yeah. one it should be, it could be a funny one right because there's so many so many incidents and pieces mm. to you know you have a lineup of web series so i thought uh, the family man would be a uh, sojourn for you uh, when will you be returning to feature length films why is this inclination towards web series uh, uh, i mean last last year we had a, actually we had a good slate of uh, what we wanted to do going forward like at the start mm-hmm. of 2020 we had like a like a series to do and a film to do and we were looking forward to all that but i mean one way or another when this pandemic came okay. i think the natural inclination is it's theaters are becoming a problem people who have finished their films are going to ott and even we had to with the cinema bandi we couldn't even think of a theatrical release given the scenario so it had to go direct to ott so at this point we uh because we still had so much to do right we still had a slate of series and films to do uh, i think the series naturally got pulled up but we definitely want to make a film and we will be uh making films but you know obviously for any filmmaker you ask the question in 2020 or 21 the answer is going to be that you know i want to wait for a better time to release the film so there is still some time to do it okay so uh, i have refrained from bringing up kanats up until now but there is this one thing that many including myself are curious to know uh, can you say anything about the involvement of uh, involvement of vijay sethupathi in your next series you don't have to put it out verbally just give me a sign something <laughs> oh wow 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 yeah the short answer would be that uh, we haven't started shooting with him but okay he's on He's, he's yeah, wow. we were wow. yeah, we were shooting wow. the Shahid schedule, and uh, Vijay Sethupathi was supposed to join, but now if, because everything is in lockdown, we'll have wow. to restart wow. our wow. schedules. Wow, yeah. wonderful! You know, the Ministry of uh, Information and Broadcast has imposed new regulations on streaming services. Do you see censorship as a restriction to storytelling and freedom of speech, or do you like to look at it uh, positively, like? it gives filmmakers an opportunity to get get creative with storytelling like uh, iranian filmmakers do what's your take on it see uh okay now i don't want to compare with iranian filmmakers because their censorship is heavy like really really heavy uh but coming to india i think uh, see for, see i always think that certification is a good thing uh as in whenever a show is made or a film is made you put a rating to it saying this is suitable for adults this has sexual content this has violence this has drug abuse it's always good to tell the audience what they're walking into and let them choose whether they want to watch it or not i think that's the best way to do anything put a certification but don't censor it hmm. but you know uh even some like a tiny amount of censorship if it is required or if it's warranted or if it's really really abusive or offensive uh is i think is necessary in a country like india it is necessary hmm. but i think a lot of people when they raise their voice against censorship it is the fear that this can be abused that's mm-hmm. the only fear like uh, we'll have to see how censorship goes how this whole thing about uh, ott censorship goes if it is used in a good way if it is only used to curb really really offensive content that can rile up emotions if that's how it goes then maybe it's a good thing but if it is used to just put everybody in their place or if it is used to just bully for makers then it won't be a good thing so i guess we'll have to just wait and see okay uh, so thank you very much raj and dk for your time i i, I had a, it was a pleasure talking to you uh, congrats for cinema bandi once again and all the best for the family man i'm looking forward to watch it on on june 4th thank you very thank much thank you sir.
Thank Very you. insightful questions. Thank you. Let us think in the in, in the morning while we are getting flooded with messages. But uh, really, <laughs> one hour ago the trailer launched and yeah, my my phone is like going off the mm-hmm. like it's like completely getting swamped with messages. I'm trying not to look at it. I'm looking at but you. Amazing is the response from Sinha. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, getting so loving. The yeah, love. We felt the love was so good. Like grandmas, somebody saying, "My dad wants to talk to you." And ah, oh. uh, Babu, Babu Nara, I mm. remember me. Today, cinema shows I'm oh, it is so sweet, you know. So these are I haven't we haven't touched those audience this much in a you know in a while. I think I don't yeah, know this yeah, yeah. kind of heartwarming comedy. So that is what uh, is uh, that's what was great. I wish we had a few more days to enjoy that, but I'm sure we can we can split the day into two with cinema <laughs> and I with the family. Wonderful. Enjoy, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Thank you, Ram. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Ram. Pleasure okay. speaking to you.